a great honor to be able to speak to you about the research that we've been conducting for the last 25 years now. Um, if we are here, it is because we are a partner of this expedition that you already uh, have heard about. And uh, I will explain why we are part of this of this uh, expedition after explaining what is our studies and uh, uh, research line about. So I uh, called this uh, this um, talk making sense of sounds and this is what we are trying uh, and I will explain why. And then th there is also a, a picture of these uh, people who are part of my laboratory. So whatever I am going to talk to you about is because we have all this bunch of people uh, who uh, work hard and the people who do not work as, as uh, we do, we just travel, uh, we, uh, uh, we rely on, on uh, them. So a, a big thank to all the, the team. So we, we are trying to make, sound, to make sense of a sound and I will try uh, to start with these sounds and then I'll explain what we try to do with them. So what we're hearing uh, are sounds of uh, whales and sperm whales. In the ocean you have thousands of, of, of uh, creatures and uh, almost all of them produce sound. And uh, actually this is because of the sound that these creatures are able to survive in this environment. This is the only support of communication they, they have. The light doesn't go further than a few meters below the surface and so they produce sounds to live. So really, uh, sound is a synonym of life in the ocean. Without sound, the ocean will be dead. So I wanted to start this uh, talk with uh, these two slides and these sounds for you to really uh, get this, uh, this point that sound is life in the ocean. And this is why if we pollute this uh, uh, channel of, of uh, communication, then we are threatening the balance of the ocean. So now, the problem is, is that uh, in the last years, in the last 100 years, we have been introducing massively sources of artificial sound in the ocean. The ocean has never been silent, never. Since the earth is earth, there has always been uh, sources of, of noise coming from the physical um, um, event, the waves, the bubbles, the earthquakes. Uh, all these produce sounds uh, as well as the uh, sounds produced by, by the animals and the animals that all produce sounds it, to a certain extent. And uh, this has been uh, uh, co-living in, in this harmony for millions of uh, years and in the last hundred years, just one, uh, uh, we have introduced massively this source of artificial noise in the ocean without even knowing we were doing it. And this is only when, when we had the equipment uh, to measure it in a proper way, which is uh, around 20 to 25 years ago, that we suddenly discovered that there was the new source of pollution, the sound, that we massively uh, um, uh, put in, uh, in the ocean for 80, year, uh, 80 years without even knowing about that. The problem is that we know it now, but we know that the ocean noise is going to increase in the next years because the activities at sea that are responsible for this uh, introduction of the sound are going to increase. And uh, this has become a global uh, threat to, to the ocean that, me, that must be dealt at a global scale. Uh, we also know that because now we are aware of the effects of the sound on the, uh, on the marine um, environment, we are uh, feeling this increasing uh, um, uh, concern but also the, this uh, demand from, uh, from, uh, from uh, the NGO, from uh, also society, to take the measures to uh, react and to act to prevent the damage that noise is causing. Uh, the problem is that uh, some economical uh, interests are also at risk because there is a lack of uh, information on how much this sound can affect the marine environment. So we need tools, we need tools and, and, and we need the data 
to address this uh, issue at a global scale. And this is what I am going to uh, try to explain uh, along these uh, next slides. So while we know that uh, sound can be uh, damaging for the environment, we uh, have little data on which species are actually concerned. At the start, if we see it, we, we thought that the only species we would suffer from this uh, effect of noise were the species that were using sound actively during the uh, day, daily life. And the rest of, of, of the species wouldn't be um, um, affected by, by it. We will see that it has changed. Within the species that, that are um, um, affected, we don't know uh, the behaviors that are um, affected. If when they are sleeping, in our case, we know that we are more sensitive to, to noise when we sleep, when, when we are at work or in a town, uh, we, we can handle, we can stand more this noise. This is the same thing in the ocean, uh, but we, we don't have data as, as we do have uh, uh, as a human, human beings. Uh, which, which component of the sounds are the most da damaging for the animals? Uh, we know there are not uh, only one source of uh, noise in, in the, the ocean, but there are all these activities that produce noise and they have this cumulative um, um, effect, but we don't know yet about them. And uh, what I was saying is that there is a really a need of tools that gather all this information to be able to respond to the demand of society uh, and, to, and to try to limit the effect of noise on the environment. So which sources are we speaking about? Well, we can imagine all these uh, activities that we uh, conduct at, 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 at sea, they produce noise. Uh, being uh, the shipping, uh, being oil and gas activity, uh, uh, marine uh, uh, re renewable, uh, navy activity, science too introduces sound, and uh, construction of platforms and also harbor. Anything that, that we do in the ocean produces noise. And in a way, to, to, to try to explain how this works, so uh, I don't know if you see it well, but maybe you, you can see it in the, in the screen. This is a 3D reconstruction of what we could expect to have uh, in terms of noise. And we are seeing that all these activities that, that we mentioned, we have uh, oil and gas, we have the windmills here, we have shipping, navy, and then they are all producing, at a certain extent, these noise sources. And in the middle, you have this uh, uh, whale that is trying to find its uh, prey in all this cacophony of uh, sound. And so this is what the reality of the ocean is now. It's filled with the sources, and in the, in the middle of, of the sources, the animals have to find their way to continue, uh, to, to continue living. So I uh, said that uh, at the start, we uh, thought that the uh, candidates to suffer more from this uh, 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 noise were the ones that use sounds uh, as the whales the dolphins, we know that uh, this is an uh, uh, inner rate to their uh, life and they need these sounds. And so we put a lot of effort in the last 20 years to try to understand <coughs> the sensitivity of all these uh, species. There are 80 species uh, to try to see if a baleen whale, if a dolphin, when it's exposed to certain sound sources, was more affected or, or not and in which circumstances. Uh, and uh, Despite all the effort, the money, and the uh, people who are uh, trying to look at that, uh, we don't have yet any uh, confirmation that these species can suffer from acoustic trauma. Uh, acoustic trauma is a specific uh, pathology that corresponds to an exposure to sound and that affects the uh, inner ear structure of our ear that um, reacts to, to an overexposure to sound. Uh, and this is very well described in uh, land mammals, in birds, uh, and in uh, uh, Kinmari mammals, this has never been yet shown that after a stranding, uh, uh, even though there was some uh, cause for that and we could see that there was some noise um, event, we have not yet found it. So why? Uh, I'm not saying here that this doesn't exist, but there are a series of circumstances that make this uh, a reality. First, uh, when an animal strands, so when, when a dolphin strands, uh, it doesn't uh, live for very long because of uh, um, uh, hyperthermia, uh, uh, because uh, its lungs are compressed, so he has very uh, a, a hard time to uh, breathe. And after a few hours, um, uh, some um, uh, res respiratory um, effect um, uh, uh, come, and then the animal dies. 
It means that if we want to have access to the inner ear to, to, to look if there is any um, effect, we have to be right there when, when the animal dies. Uh, we, we cannot wait for a, a few hours, otherwise there is an autolysis that makes it very, very difficult uh, to look at the different uh, possible uh, trauma that the animal had suffered. Um, so you have to be there, but it's not only to be there, you have to know how to extract these ears, so you have to be uh, um, uh, educated to, to do that. And then once you've done that, you have to fix the, uh, the ear uh, with, a special, uh, with a special solution that uh, blocks and that fix all the structure at the where at the, at the, at the time of, of the death. And, and then you have to have a laboratory that is able to analyze this. So this makes a lot of conditions to uh, uh, extract these, uh, these uh, ears. And uh, over the, the world, when this um, stranding event uh, um, 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 happened, it's very hard to have these conditions to be uh, fulfilling uh, the, the case. So we have access to some, to some ears, uh, some, some are fresh. Some have not been affected by, uh, no, by noise. So um, as a result, there, there is not yet a single confirmation that the animals suffer from acoustic trauma. In theory, yes, because they, are, they have the same structure as uh, the land mammals. And when you expose the land mammals to some uh, uh, um, uh, intense noise, then you will find these different uh, uh, trauma. But uh, in theory, again, but not in uh, your practice. But in the recent years, OK, and I just put this slide because this is something that, that happened. So we know there is some um, effect. And this is uh, a series of collisions that happened in the Canary Islands where there is a, a heavy uh, uh, traffic uh, in between the islands. And these are some sperm whales that also uh, uh, happen to live there uh, as resident in the islands. And they often collide with these uh, ferries. But in the uh, recent years, we have been uh, 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 finding that other species that are not uh, able to hear, so they, are, they, have not, uh, they don't have any ears, so that they cannot hear the way we uh, understand it, but they have these structures that um, allow them to uh, maintain the balance in the water column. And the structure of, of, of these organs uh, is very similar to the uh, inner ear structure of our of the mammals and the birds. And when you expose these animals to artificial sounds, they present uh, um, acoustic trauma that is not compatible with life, and they uh, cannot eat, and they cannot breathe, and they eventually die. And this is a bunch of uh, um, families of invertebrates. So this is, we are speaking about thousands of uh, species. If our task was already very difficult with 80 species of, uh, of whales and, uh, and uh, other dolphins, now we are facing thousands, thousands, thousands of uh, your species, uh, crustaceans, uh, cephalopods, um, uh, jelly, jellyfishes, uh, self, self, self fishes, coral reefs. Uh, we have tested them, not all, but uh, some, so, some of them, and they uh, do present this acoustic trauma when they, when they are exposed to uh, artificial noise. So it uh, seems, not it, it, it doesn't seem, it appeared that this uh, noise um, effect in, in the ocean goes much beyond only a few species, as, as we thought a, a few years ago, but it, it does um, affect the whole ecosystem. So we have to look at this at an ecosystem uh, scale and not only uh, looking at some uh, species. So this has changed in the recent years all the paradigm and uh, all the focus of the research that we were conducting. So this is what I was saying, that there was the exposure of this invertebrate to low frequency sound. Uh, the lesions were totally new to uh, the invertebrate pathology. Uh, and, and we looked at uh, these, uh, these mechanism of, uh, of, uh, of uh, these uh, 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 trauma. Uh, and um, uh, we uh, said that the, we, we couldn't find that the animals that were um, affected by, by this sound could survive. Now, uh, just a, a short slide to say that this finding has brought us to apply this to um, agriculture. Uh, there are some um, invasive alien species uh, around the, the world, both in, uh, in oceans, uh, in rivers, in lakes, uh, that um, are um, affecting the uh, economy of, of um, agriculture. And uh, many of these species are also invertebrates. And we applied the techniques of exposing to a series of specific 
sound, uh, both in frequency, in intensity, and in time exposure. And we found that we could target uh, the, the, the specific uh, balance, um, uh, well, they, uh, um, the uh, cells that were responsible for the balance, etc., cetera, on, 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 the, on their, uh, in, in, in their life. And we were able to obtain the same result as we uh, found uh, with uh, the um, uh, squids and etc. But in that case, to um, eliminate them. So uh, at the moment, we are um, applying this technique not to uh, help to, to save uh, the, uh, the, the ocean, but to try to favor the uh, agriculture in some areas of the world. So this is a parenthesis. So going, going back to, uh, to our object, uh, all these data that were gathered in the last years led the government to um, think of a way to regulate these, uh, these noise. Until very recently, there was no law, there was no thing that would prevent anyone to go at, 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 at sea and to uh, in introduce whatever amount of noise uh, anyone, uh, uh, anyone wanted. So uh, in the EU, uh, the Commission uh, d decided in 2010 to include noise uh, in a series of descriptors of the good environmental status of the ocean. And they said that the member states should uh, take uh, into account the level of noise uh, uh, on their cost. And if these uh, noise levels were going to be over a certain threshold, they would be given a few years to re reduce it. So for the, the, the first time, noise has uh, been taken as, uh, uh, as officially um, pollution. And uh, there is a law that, uh, um, that mandates the member states to act to, to lower this. And we believe that uh, this uh, same, um, uh, same approach will be uh, applied uh, internationally. In Asia, we uh, work with colleagues in Japan and in tai 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 Taiwan, and they are already uh, trying to apply the same uh, in the, the, their country. So we hope that in a few years, we will all have the same standards and we will have the same way to control the level of noise uh, in the ocean. We also have uh, all these different um, uh, events uh, along the year that allows us to gather and to speak about and to share the, the data. The community is, is small. Uh, the uh, um, amount of people who work on the uh, problem of noise pollution at, at, at sea, we are less than 150 people. Uh, uh, and we are not speaking only about uh, science, but we, saw, we also speak about the uh, uh, people who work in, in the NGOs, uh, in the governments, uh, in the industry. So we're not too, too, too many people, but we're trying to go uh, as fast as we can to, co to convince that action is needed. So uh, knowing this framework, uh, we, uh, with, with my colleagues, uh, decided uh, some 20 years ago to uh, start a, a program that is called LIDO, uh, Listen to the Deep Ocean, that would uh, allow the deployment of um, sensors at, at sea that would be able to discriminate different sounds uh, in real time, being able to extract the parameters that uh, all of these sounds have uh, to separate them um, apart and, and uh, to tell which sources had uh, pro produced it. And in that way to reconstruct the soundscape to see which pressure coming from uh, these human activities would uh, affect or could um, affect the animal in a certain area. And this program um, has led us to, uh, uh, as, as I said, have these different sensors around the, the world in uh, almost all the uh, seas. So now we are at about 150 channels that are flowing uh, this stream uh, live to our servers in uh, Spain, where we uh, analyze them. Uh, and so we can uh, look at the different uh, uh, presence, how, how noise is affecting certain species in a certain area. And the standard that, that we ap applied is, is the same that was um, adopted by the EU uh, under this uh, law that the member states have to follow now. So this is really a, a way to have a global, um, global uh, view, uh, pr perspective on how much noise is uh, produced in, uh, in the ocean and how uh, we, can, uh, we can handle it and how we can offer some uh, solution to it. We come back to this uh, 3D uh, rep uh, representation that we had. So we, we were with this sperm whale in the middle of this chaotic uh, 
um, a scenario and we, we can see the squid is trying to echolocate to find them and what we we see here is one of the sensors that is gathering all this information coming from the the ships and uh, also from the whale and the analysis is uh, per performed on, on on board of, of, of the buoy and is transmitted uh, through our our server to the operators so they can take timely uh, actions to prevent uh, this effect uh, to be uh, ad adverse to the animal. Uh, uh, what, what it does, it tells them where the animals are and they can uh, decide to uh, shut down or to limit the introduction of, of their nose until the animal uh, has left uh, the area because we know that uh, this, this energy, the closer you are, the, the more uh, damaging uh, it, it, it is. So if you allow some, some time for the animal to leave uh, the area, then the damage uh, is much less. These are a series of, uh, uh, um, of, um, of hardware uh, that, that we use to uh, uh, support the software that, that analyzes all this, this data. So uh, we have this deep sea or the shallow water cabled uh, observatory, so they are cabled to a shore. So this allows us to have a, a full access to uh, data and to power them. We have these uh, buoys that, that are um, uh, um, 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 autonomous. Uh, we have these uh, observatories from the geophysics sensors, the neutrino also sensor. This stored array, which is the technique that we use uh, in our expedition uh, that brought us here. So I will talk, talk to you about that a, a little bit later. We can also have vehicles that can be uh, uh, also sent to, uh, to, to the ocean to uh, yeah, measure noise. And then we have these offline da data, uh, which, which is shown here, that are all these hundreds uh, of hours of recordings that many labs have, and they don't know how to analyze it. And we can uh, take them and put them into the software uh, uh, package to extract all these, uh, all these data. Just as, as an example, uh, we have a contract with the CTBTO. The CTBTO is a treaty between all, all states to ban this nuclear testing. And they have this uh, station all over the, the world to listen to these uh, tests and to ban them. And uh, they, they have um, 11 uh, hydro uh, acoustic stations around the, the world. And uh, each of them has six nodes uh, that are separated by uh, a few miles. So each of them has six. Uh, ten, of, 10 of them, so this is 60 stations that flow the data uh, <coughs> continuously for the last 10, 10 years. And uh, we analyzed these 660 years of continuous da the data. So if, if, um, if we multiply, if you multiplicate uh, 10 nodes by 6 and by 10, 10, 10 years, this is 660 years of continuous data. We analyzed it through the uh, ESM system in 22 days. So it was very fast and we could stay which uh, kind of animals were, were there, the level of... of so it, it is it, it, it's, it's quite a powerful uh, tool. Uh, I wanted to spend some time with this uh, slide, but maybe uh, because of the time we are late, uh, I won't do so much. But what I wanted to point out is this is the architecture of how the system works. This is uh, an audio stream, so live. This is uh, what, what we put when we put a microphone into the water. We cut into segments of around 16 seconds uh, this audio stream, and we run a series of detectors uh, to look at the different uh, events. We call this um, event. It could be impulsive, that is an, uh, a sound that is very short in time but covers a lot of frequency, so very short like this. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I uh, needed to wake you up. Uh, and then we have also uh, others that are continuous sound and they are tunnels and they are longer in uh, time but shorter in frequency. So it's like a So this, this series of detectors, they separate them into these, these categories and we also cut the uh, band so we already have a, a good idea of what kind of event uh, we can find in this uh, segment that we uh, took as an example. Uh, if I found my, my, my arrow, yeah, here. And of this part, so look at the level of, uh, of noise, so the overall noise uh, uh, over the whole bandwidth, but also the, the noise in these, uh, in these particular ones. And then we, we, we can look at the contribution of each of them to the overall noise that we, um, that, that we found here. 
uh, in that in that, in that sense, it makes sense. We are trying to make sense of uh, sounds, because if you only take this measurement of noise without knowing who has contributed to it, you might think that uh, there is a noisy area, uh, while that there is a bunch of whales that are passing by and they are yeah, singing. So this raises the, the level of, of of noise. But if you don't know it, you might think, well, it might be a ship, it might be anything. So this is very important. To, to, to be able to uh, take apart all these different sources and to look at the uh, con contribution of each of them. So this is the easy part. It takes us 0 0.01 seconds to get to this point. So it's very fast uh, af after the, the event has, um, has, uh, has, uh, has happened. But then we uh, go to this classification uh, process that aims at putting an identity on the sound. So at the moment, we only De detected this impulsive and this continuous sound. Now we want to know which one it is. So this is a neural network based um, a, 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 a analysis that uh, uh, we, uh, we, we use and we teach the system to recognize the parameters that belong to each of the sources that we want to uh, identify. And uh, so this takes us to this uh, part. The output of, uh, of this is a number is a number which is the probability that the event that was detected within the segment that, that we had at the, at the start belongs to a certain class, so to, a start, to an animal or to a sheep or to an, an activity. And at the end of, of the uh, process, we have this uh, reconstruction of what was going on during the segment. We, we call it the soundscape. And we are able to understand the presence and the pressure that this uh, um, event may uh, suffer from, uh, from some activities. So uh, this is an um, uh, interesting way to uh, work. And then the last stage is the location of the, uh, the localization of the event. So if we have more than one sensor, we can triangulate and we can also give the 3D, uh, 3D position of the source uh, within this, this soundscape. So this is very useful when, when you want to uh, take action to, mit to mitigate the effect of noise. These are some partners that uh, uses the system. This is what we call uh, the interface. So this is what we could uh, have if you get into the listen to the deep uh, dot com uh, website. It's a public. So you get to a map like this. We have all these spots. You click on the green ones. The blue ones are uh, password protected. So you, you want to click on the green one. And you, when you click on the green one, you enter live uh, to what is going on at that moment at that specific place. So um, uh, we can switch it on. Uh, so, sorry, we can switch this. So I'll skip it. Sorry, <laughs> we can skip it. Uh, I, I, I will try to go live uh, a little bit late, later. Uh, I I will very quickly give you some example of what we use. I mean, how we use these uh, these um, data for. I don't know if you are familiar with what we call the spectrogram. A uh, spectrogram is a drawing of what we hear is uh, similar to a partition for a, a, a for musician, uh, except that this is a 3D, uh, a 3D uh, uh, drawing. We have the time that is going on, the frequency band, and the intensity of the color that, that shows the event shows also the, the intensity of the uh, uh, source that was picked up. And all these squares that, that you see here, this is the output of the classification uh, process that labels all the data that, that we see for some people who are not uh, um, expert and cannot find uh, what it is at the first glance. This is a, a, a map, so this is a similar map that we are going to build with the expedition. Uh, I will uh, show you uh, when, I'm, when I finish. And all these data allow us to manage and to provide this to the manager and to the government so that they can look at how much uh, noise they can find in, in an area, and if they have to uh, change it uh, in terms of the uh, also location, etc. Uh, very shortly, an example of what we did, uh, and we are still doing in the in the Arctic. So uh, this is an expedition that took place in 2013. Uh, was called Odin uh, Arctic Technology and Cruise. We went there for the first time to gather data on the biodiversity of uh, of uh, the area. Here we have a, a, a satellite image that showed the, the ice patch uh, in uh, the area. We are uh, northeast uh, Green, Greenland. The red, uh, sorry, the green track is the icebreaker that was making some experiment. 
and we at some point dropped into the, the, the water uh, uh, autonomous buoy that I showed be before with the sensors and we, we can see how this buoy uh, drift uh, along uh, time this is the red line drift quite uh, quite in a straight line and uh, while the, the the icebreaker was was doing all these different uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, experiments uh, and eventually we uh, got it back at that uh, point and during all this uh, time we, we were able to record uh, the data and uh, particularly here we have uh, uh, been, been able to record a seismic survey that was going on uh, here so this is the position of our buoy that is drifting this is august 28th and this is uh, two days after and this is the the track of the seismic vessel and uh, um, the thing is that uh, we uh, we were in between the two positions only 30 kilometers um, away but if you look at the level that that we gather it was less uh, it was more than 60 db between one day to another which is tremendous and the explanation is that uh, here we were very close to the to the border of a sort of a, of a slope uh, meaning that the level of uh, of the seismic vessel was getting very fast close to us while here we, we were several kilometers in this uh, continental shelf that means that all these uh, uh, sounds were absorbed uh, easier and faster than in that case so it means that this area uh, is really a changing area so it's difficult to model it uh, because of the changing of the ice but also this uh, changing of the different bathymetry. I will skip this uh, because th this is another uh, uh, example. This is a catamaran that we built and you can tow with the same technology. Uh, we use it, uh, you can have a look, this is a small thing. You, you can tow it uh, behind, the, behind the Zodiac and it's very convenient to, to get this measurement wherever it is needed in a fast way. This I skip it, this is what this catamaran does, but I already said that. The uh, beauty of, of it is that it's an internet tool, so uh, wherever you deploy this technology, you have it uh, accessible directly to, uh, to internet, to your tab, to your phone, and uh, anyone can, can see it and can have access uh, uh, in real time to what is going on uh, to it. Uh, this is another example that I wanted to show. This is a seismic survey. Uh, this, this is a spectrogram again, and this is the, the shooting. The seismic survey, they use this acoustic uh, charge to uh, penetrate the uh, bottom of, of, of the ocean, uh, 40 kilometers uh, down to get the, the echo back and to be able to look at the presence of oil or, or gas. And they shoot, this is the way that they, they call it, and this is what we see here. This is a real bang, a bang every eight to 10 seconds. So while there is this, this bang, this is impossible to uh, de detect any event because this is masking any, anything that is happening. But in, in, in between two successive uh, bangs or shots, you, you can see these uh, events here that are a little bit greener. And these are uh, fin well calls. And the fin wells, they have this call as, at a specific uh, um, time and uh, at, at 20 hertz, this is the most common. And uh, you have time in, in eight seconds to, to de detect them and to alert the uh, activity of, of what is going on. And, we, and you can model this. You can uh, uh, both take the model of how much sound the uh, activity is, in, uh, uh, is in introducing in the ocean. So this is the vertical uh, component of it. And this is the horizontal one. And this gives you an, an idea of uh, how much sound is in the area. And you can reconstruct the directivity of this uh, sound up to the point that you have a 3D uh, image of uh, the energy that is in introduced in, uh, in the ocean. And thanks to that, you can take this, you, you can put it back in, in, in the ocean uh, in presence of, of, of the animal and, uh, and uh, see how much this impacts their behavior or uh, their uh, capacity to uh, communicate. And this uh, image, this is a short um, uh, image that show the, uh, this is an air gun shot. Here we have the uh, yeah, vessel that, that is here. And, uh, and we can see that in between these two shots, so now um, uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to stop because otherwise it's not uh, possible to, un to understand. We have a, a whale here. There is a whale. And when, when the whale produces its uh, call, uh, it is green. So this is not the, the shot. This is the fin whale call. 
if there was no sheep, no air gun in, in the area, all the area would, would be green because this coal is able to, to propagate at a distance of hundreds of kilometers. When you uh, put in, 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 in the presence of uh, the, the well an acoustic source that covers it, it masks every, e everything. So when you, when you see the screen in uh, blue, this is when the uh, air, air gun, so this acoustic source, is, is shot and is covering the whole uh, coal of, of the uh, well. So this is what, what you see every eight, eight seconds. He uh, shots, if a and it, it covers the capacity both for the whale and for um, our, ourselves to, to, to uh, de de detect it. So this is quite impressive. Um, OK, I skip this. And just to uh, make this uh, un 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 understandable, these uh, buoys that, that, we uh, that we have here that are able to analyze the, 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 uh, the data, if you put them around the activity, uh, they, they will be able to, to tell you uh, where the, the, the whales are. Oops, sorry. <coughs> OK, where the, the animals are. So the activity, this is the uh, uh, air, air gunshot, uh, can, can, uh, can stop for, for, uh, for a few minutes, and they can leave the animal to, to uh, leave the area. OK, so this, all these different uh, applications we are putting uh, in, uh, in place to have a better un understanding of what is going on. And while now are we, are we here, uh, uh, partners of uh, the expedition, is because uh, despite all the data that we gather from the fixed place, sometimes we, we go to some, uh, some remote area like the Arctic and we spend a few days, we, we have a lot of areas that we don't have any data on. And uh, uh, this expedition that is covering a part of, of the world that was not explored in the, in the past in terms of the acoustics is allowing us to gather data to complement uh, what we know of, of uh, this fixed station that we have around the, the world. And for the first time, we, we are able to connect this uh, data from the fixed station to, uh, or to others knowing what is going on. At, at the same time, this is, we are uh, conscious that we are uh, g getting these snapshots because uh, a, a, a boat moves and then you, 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 you cannot s uh, stay there for weeks. So the amount of, uh, of noise and the presence of different animals there is a snapshot of what is going on in uh, 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 the area. But what, what we also do is we gather the data from the AAS. The AAS is the uh, system that all the ships have to have on uh, board to get um, um, identified. And this is um, um, available. So we are able to reconstruct along the, the course of, of the ship uh, what amount of noise was in the area before the ship arrived and after um, uh, he left. So we, we not on, um, only get the snapshot, which, which is the uh, level of noise that allows us to calibrate the different maps that we are going that that, that we are uh, um, having in all the areas that the ships go through. So uh, thanks to uh, to this, these maps are not uh, only theoretical because uh, we, we can add, uh, um, 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 we can um, associate some uh, source level uh, to a certain ship, but if we're not on a site to make the proper measurement, then this uh, is only um, uh, in the air. So thanks to this, we, uh, we have access to the, to, to, to the data. And here, this is a map of uh, the presence of animals. So there are the uh, whales that we found along the route when we crossed the pa Pacific, so from Chile to um, uh, the French Polynesia. And uh, the, the more red, the more uh, intense the presence of, of the animal were. So the, it was a lucky trip uh, to uh, find. And uh, I uh, uh, also would like you to visit the website of uh, the expedition that is called omexpedition.listentothedeep.com, uh, where you have access to uh, some sample of the uh, of, of, of what we uh, uh, gather. So you are again on this uh, map, but this is ex exclusively, exclusively the uh, re recordings that were performed during the uh, expedition. And if we go, and they are labeled with whales and dolphins, so I, I cannot read uh, what, what is said, uh, but I will enter uh, uh, this one. I, I don't okay, know what it said. Yeah. Okay, go. Yeah. So you will click here and you are, you are getting straight to the recordings that were performed 
at, in this specific location uh, uh, at this specific time. Uh, and, and again, this is these labels that that explain that what we have uh, identified out this this well. So you can play with it. You can follow us uh, with some delay. You you can follow us and uh, and see what what we uh, encountered along the, the the way. If 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 you want to go back, you just click on this um, row here, and you are back on on the map where you can listen to fish, to uh, seals, to different animals, uh, to sperm whales, um, etc. And then we will uh, com complete, of course, this uh, on on the way. And with and with this, I. Uh, Thank you for attention, and I hope I'm not too late. I, I am late, not too late. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>